So a lot of people uh, wanted the recording, so this is being recorded as well. So um, yeah, uh, welcome all of you from all over the world. Um, nice to have you here. Uh, so today's uh, session is going to be on us restarting the 21-day challenge, which is quite uh, ironic that uh, Lizanne is on here because uh, we had a, a call in the week and uh, Lizanne was saying how amazing the bond that forms uh, when we're in this together, and uh, was it a year or two now? I don't even know how long. I think it's almost two years um, that we did the 21-day challenge together on the group, and the feeling was incredible because daily we were sharing, and we were saying, well, today, you know, I, I was feeling gra grateful, and uh, many of you have started the challenge, and some of you have done the challenge, so, so you start seeing this this group feeling. So it's not anything that you're going to hear or understand that you've never heard before it's not new information it's the practice putting into practice this um this teaching so so like i posted on the group today what the buddha said is that we are all thought and our thoughts will dictate our reality and our life so the way we think is the way we live and the way we live is the way that we die which is an interesting thing to to ponder as well so, so the way we view existence and life is, there's two ways of looking at it. One is that uh, we're just a participant in a greater scheme of things, and we're just supposed to make do and uh, let life throw us wherever we want, and then we're patient, and we suffer, and we look for ways of being happy outside ourselves and, you know, get a better job or more money or a, a, a nicer spouse or, uh, you know, a better child that will behave better to us always looking or a new house or a new car always looking outside ourselves there's a few more people coming uh always looking outside ourselves for happiness right we're always looking for where can we find happiness can it be here can it be there can it be anywhere else so the 21 day challenge has a, the reason it's called a challenge is because the modern day people love challenges there's this thing about improvement and competition and success so, so it's actually not a challenge as such. So um, if you think there's a, a win at the end, um, there isn't. And our brains are fixed on, uh, on, on the ability to measure our success. Like, how well did I do? Am I better than this person? Am I worse, worse than this other person? Before I continue, welcome to Caroline, uh, also from the cold Northern Hemisphere, and Priyakshi in Dubai. Welcome, guys. um yeah well you can say hello can you guys uh hello everyone how are you coach oh. good are you long time no see happy new year i'm here only what i'm here only enjoying the weather oh, okay how is it is it hot or cold it's cool it's very yeah. cool uh, uh last two three days it's stormy yeah here it's uh, it's the hottest place on earth, Cape Town, at the moment. Okay. So it's 38 degrees here. We are at uh, 17 degrees and we are enjoying outdoors a lot nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make the best of it before the before the heat comes back. And Caroline, welcome as well. Actually, your mic is echoing back because I think you're on speaker, but you can just mute it when you're not um, singing. So um, what I was talking about is how we look for happiness. Like, what's the purpose of life? Why can't we find joy? You know, uh, is it in the achievement of things? And everybody on this group knows on some, some level um, that happiness. Welcome, Maria. Oh, okay. All, everybody's a bit late today. Welcome, Maria. Uh, John, welcome, John, from England. Looks like the Northern Hemisphere is outstripping the Southern Hemisphere participants here, which is good. Um, uh, you guys need some warm weather. So we're in hot Cape Town. It's 38 degrees Celsius here, very hot. So we'll blow some warm wind to warm you guys up over there. Uh, nice of all of you to make it. Nice to see you all. Um, so, yeah, just to continue on and maybe ask a question, has anybody found happiness in anything that lasted permanently? Maybe a new job or maybe a perfect spouse. Does anybody want to invalidate my argument? I'd love that. If someone could say, I did find happiness and this is where I found it, in something external. Anybody want to try? What made you happy for a long time? 
I know for me, my child, having my, my children, made me very happy in life. Anyone else? What made you very happy? Nobody has any happiness. That's quite sad. What about you, Lizanne? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, so well, you, happy, the, the trick was you said that la that lasted a long time. So what's a long time? What do you mean? I don't. Well, time doesn't exist, as you know. So yeah. Doesn't, so doesn't that's why I don't know. I don't know how to answer your question because you're tricking us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys that have been on many calls with me knows know that you shouldn't answer because it's not what I'm asking. So I suppose that's the right approach. Don't say anything. Uh, that was my session this morning with this guy, and I said to him, so what is this? And he said, it's that. I said, no, it's not that. He said, what about this? And I said, no, it's that. But he said, then, then I won't say anything. I said, now you're getting closer, right? Because the normal, normal moment we label something and name something, um, we lose the essence of it. So great response there, Lizanne. So what, what the Buddha observed, and not just the Buddha, but every human being, if they care to observe it, just when you say the Buddha observes it and people go, oh, well, then it must be true. Right? But it doesn't really matter if the Buddha said it or not, because you can observe this from direct experience. That what makes you one, one day really happy will make you sad another day. Does that even make sense? So the same car that got you so excited, as John experienced, you got a wonderful little car, it's, and a couple of days later, someone bumped into the back of him and he's like, oh, so frustrating, you know. It's not the car itself, but what happened to the car. So, and our perception of what happened to the car or to our spouse or to us in the relationship. Welcome, Shahid, from uh, from your car. Uh, we were just speaking about cars, so it's an appropriate place where you are right now. So, So we know that happiness can't be found in things. Then happiness can be found somewhere else, right? And... You guys all know this, um, so so it has to be found within you, right? Can happiness exist in isolation? Lizan, don't trick me with these Zen questions, okay? Uh, can happiness? Yeah, that's a, actually that's a, that's a good question. What is the definition of happiness? What does happiness mean? Now that you ask the question, you, you're going to have to guess because you know a good a good coach simply asks more questions; it doesn't have any answers. Does anybody want to guess what the true definition of happiness is? And you can be wrong. Please be wrong. Please don't try to be right. It's such a trap. Anybody want to guess? Anissa? I'm not, so I'm going to say to that that it's personal. And my definition of happiness may be different than John's or Maria's or Anissa's. And so I feel happiness is conditional on who I am. And yes. And is it momentary? Or is it permanent? Happiness. If it's a state of, of being, it's it has to be impermanent. Good good answer. So so happiness can, is happiness felt in the heart or felt in the mind? If you think about it, you ask a child, a uh, little child playing around, you go, excuse me, little girl, are you happy? What do you think the response would be? The first response. You'd find, as I've experienced with four, four children, they don't know what happiness is. Because happiness is a concept that we constructed. If I ask someone is happy, they'll say, well, you know, I'm comfortable in my own skin, got a nice job, got a nice car. Yes, I'm happy. But is that what happiness is? Or is that a concept in your mind based on evaluating facts? So you evaluate the facts in your head and you say i'm happy so so happiness is not a goal to be achieved because that's momentary right because later on your car breaks down and your you know your bedroom's got a leak i'm unhappy today why are you unhappy well because because it's all subjective based in the mind but children have this thing called joy which is not again a term that we define it is a state of being so if if joy is a state of being that is not momentary it is available to you at any moment, at any given time. You can return to joy. Then it's not a goal to be achieved. People say, well, I want to be happy. And that's why antidepressant usage is so high, because uh, you will never get to happiness. That is no ultimate objective is happiness. And like Lizanne said so beautiful, that anything that is a state of being will change because it's momentary. So you're chasing after fleeting emotions. But what's the point then? 
What's the point chasing after happiness when you know happiness will arrive and then it will depart because it's conceptual, right? So not to try to confuse you, but actually it is to try to confuse you, is to transcend happiness. So if we get beyond happiness, then what state of being are we ultimately trying to achieve? And why is it so difficult? Why can't we just be? What does it mean to be? Come on, the regulars should know these answers. Going with the flow, every moment, accepting every moment as it is. Okay. Well, you're a veteran, you're a veteran, Priyakshi, so you know, you know what that means. Going with the flow, accepting everything it is. But why is that so difficult to do? Because it's easy to say, right? You know, just go with the flow, accept everything. And then your brain goes, oh, my God, why is this happening to me? Right? Why is it so difficult? Why is it so difficult to see that life is happening in your favor and that you're going exactly where you were meant to go? That's why Rumi's poems sell for such a fortune. Turn your, uh, your, your speaker off, uh, Priyakshi. It's feeding back into the, into the mic. Um, yeah, so why is it so difficult? Does anybody know? Why is it so difficult to just be in the flow, accept things as they are? Too many distractions. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, so conditions can change. And if we're just being, if we're being with the conditions or the circumstances or the situation, that's not really, why well, it is being yet. Uh, it's tricky. It's hard to put words to these concepts, coach. That's why I'm asking. I know. We don't think about these things, right? So yeah. there isn't a right answer. There isn't, nobody knows with definite proof, but we have some, some idea uh, from experience and I always talk about direct experience, not conceptual experience, right? So from direct experience, and you say, okay, well, I'm going with the flow right now. Anissa, you were going to say something. And no expectations, I wanted to add. Just there's no expectations. Well, that is, having no expectations is the same as going with the flow and surrendering to the moment and saying yes to the moment. But my question is, why is it so difficult to do that? Right? Um, so expectations is one very key point that we have an expectation of this moment go for it carol who's carol me ah caroline oh yeah yes caroline tell me um Welcome. i think we have i think we have an illusion of control and i think the control makes us feel safe and if we let go we feel like we're letting go of our own control and that might be we, we 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 are frightened to do that because yeah 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 so it's the illusion of control and us letting go of this control would uh end up creating a worse situation than us resisting the moment and that's a valid point that's through direct experience so in other words you're you're floating down a raft right you don't know where this place is going so you want to say something Carol? I was just going to say that um, because we have a, this negativity bias that actually keeps us safe, maybe that's a part of it, the control thing, and we, we, we're just running around doing the patterns of our past. So it's very hard to break out and change the pattern that we've been doing so that we, and also let go of the illusion of control so that we can change our path into joy, for example. Yeah, so the first half of it was a good diagnosis again because of our negativity bias. Very useful information you're saying. It's, it's about why can't we, and you're right. So it's the negativity bias. It's, so, so in other words, it's our past conditioning, how we're taught to engage with the world. We're not taught to let things go. Our parents have taught us, get up in the morning, you must go after them, chase after your existence. And they're not wrong about that. But the problem is it's all resistance-based. In other words, you must resist life and fight for what you want. That's the other thing. We've got to fight for our rights. So, But when it comes to your internal state and you go onto the battlefield with yourself, you will lose because you are fighting yourself. right? So what, when you talk about what is the self, it's the conditioned self. So the 21-day challenge is about unconditioning. So what we want to do is all these patterns that have made us react and engage with the world in a particular way we have to change those patterns. Why? Because the reason why we can't go with the flow and why we can't just be in the moment and do everything the Buddha says and all these great mystics have said is because our bodies have been programmed for a long time 
to interact with the world in an entirely different way. So we have to go against our programming. So, so you don't fight the old, you integrate the old and you create the new. We're not here to say our parents were wrong, that was wrong, mm. don't do it like that. What we're here to say is that how do we bring that negativity bias, that predisposition to look at resisting life into? So in other words, if you're used to resisting life, then why not apply that to resisting the urge to control? You're still using the force of resistance. Mm. What do you say? So yeah, I, that is what I wanted to say earlier on, is it's about honoring who we are, every part of our being, in order to be, because if, we, if we're not going to honor our, our good and our not so good and try and control it with the negativity bias, it's what is it teaching me? And then letting it go. And that's what I've found of late is I'm honoring my emotions. I'm honoring everything that comes to the surface and I'm not trying to fight it. And that allows me to stay present and as you have started, Richard, saying observing rather than participating. Mm. Well, you're a veteran as well. So, yes, and you've done. So, so that was the next part we're going to come to, how to do that. And that's what you're talking about, honoring, allowing, not resisting, and creating those alternative dialogues. And beautifully said. So thank you. Thank you for adding that on. So the reason we find it so difficult is once again, because we're programmed in a certain way. So we don't see reality for what it is. We see it for what we've created it to be, not by our own doing, by our past uh, environment, by our upbringing and all the rest of it. So you need a will, a desire greater than your programming. And most people don't have that. Why? Why don't most people have that? Because their life seems to be working. It's only when people find their lives are absolute shit. They're drinking themselves to death. Um, they're abusing their bodies. They're abusing their mind. Everything's collapsing around them. They're like, oh, God, I need to do something. So that's the, that's the time they normally reach out for me. And I'm saying, it's too late. Go away. No, I don't do that. And he said, I, can't, I have been known to do that, right? But don't come to, don't look for help when your head is against the wall. You know, I was very fortunate where I had someone come into my life and say to me, you know what, uh, I don't think you know where you're going. And I said, how dare you? Because I'm a man, you know, how dare you? The man, when someone criticizes a man, the first thing they do is they look outwards to who's talking to them and then criticize them or blame them or label them or accuse them. What most women do, which is my revelation for the week, by the way, as I'm still learning, is that generally in my life, and I may be biased as well, women would say, what is the message? Not who's delivering it. So if I say to a woman, look, this is what I think you're doing, they're going to say, let me see what he's saying. Yeah. Or what, what she's saying. It doesn't really matter who's saying it. Whereas a man says, but what's your qualifications before we even proceed? Whereas a woman can look at the fact and analyze it and go, yeah, I think he's got a point. Or, no, nah, that's bullshit. I don't accept that. And that's that intuition and, and, and the ego mind's a little softer. And that's why we find in places like this more men, more women than men. And those men that have reached out, I mean... You know, I salute you because I'm one of those rare few. So for us to break out of our suffering and our conditioned patterns as men is a little more challenging. Yet the results can be quite astounding as well. And that's what I talk about yoga as well. You know, yoga is this amazing thing designed by men for to help men get out of their heads and get into their bodies. But of course, the women said, oh, we love this, right? Because it flows with us. It's like, oh, movement. And all. It's very natural. As a man goes, no, that's all just, you know, uh, female stuff. We don't want to do that. But that's why men men design that because we're stuck in our heads. And I'm not criticizing men because I'm a man myself. All I know is the work that we have to do takes more work and more challenge. And so the opportunity to, to reach those higher levels are even greater. Coming back to the 21 day challenge, we first have to ask the question, why is it so difficult to change? Because otherwise, What's the point going through 21 days? Like, I mean, you've got so many YouTube videos to watch. You've got, you know, you've got to paint the garage. You've got to go walk the dogs every morning. Where are you going to find time to do this 21-day challenge? I don't need a challenge anyway. I'm perfect as I am, right? That's the internal dialogue. But the reason you're here and you're listening to this is because there's something in you that says, I want more out of life, okay? So once you realize that your past conditioning and your past perceptions have created the world that you live in now, we, and we want to change that, then what is the process of change? How do you change the patterns? Because we realized, as we're talking along here, is that 
environment, past conditioning, past passions, our perceptions about nature and of reality and of people and of success and of things are flawed, right? Because you realize when you finally got that money or you finally married that person or you finally had that child or you finally, it lasted momentarily. And then you're back to, you know, like a friend of mine bought a new house. I can't wait to get him a new house. He got there and he said they put the wrong carpets in and we can't even change it because there's like a false floor there and we got to pay a fortune and they're miserable now. And so that moment that they took their keys and walked into their new house lasted about six seconds until he went, oh my God, look at this floor. Now it's a six month journey to correct the floor. So what was the point of that? Right? So, so how do we change those patterns so that we can find joy again? When I say again, did we ever know what joy, unconditional joy felt like? Did we ever know that? Do you ever know what that feels like, unconditional joy? And when was that? And how long did it last? And you say your camera's on and you're in front of me, so you might as well speak. I don't know why you're in front of me, but that's good. Then maybe it's a sign. No. The question was, when you find joy, and how long did you maintain that joy for? Right. No, when did you have unconditional joy, ever? Baby. It's the time. Hmm? When you're a baby. When you're a child. Exactly. So we're not teaching you anything new. We're teaching you something old. Okay. Yeah. Which means is I'm teaching you to remember. I'm not teaching you something for the future reference. So I'm teaching you how to get rid of all the stuff you've believed about life so that beneath all of that, you can see reality for what it is. Right. So what the, uh, what the ancients say is that our thoughts, perceptions, feelings, expectations, what is success, what we should be doing. Uh, I should be doing that. Like a friend of mine said, I feel horrible in myself. And I said, why? He said, I haven't exercised in three weeks. I feel horrible. I said, why is that horrible? Well, because I'm not exercising. So what? Why do you have to make yourself feel horrible because you didn't exercise? Go exercise or don't exercise. But we've been taught by society, if you don't exercise, then you're going to get unwell. And then you should be upset with yourself because that's what your, your parents would have told you. You're not becoming anything with your life. And then you say, should that make me sad? Yes, it's terrible. You got to get out there, son. Make something with yourself, right? <laughs> so then, if we don't make something because we don't know what the something is, we spend the rest of our time drinking ourselves to death or doing something else to find happiness because I feel so crap about myself. I'm not exercising. I'm not a success. I'm not doing things with my life. I'm not going anywhere. Where do you want to go? What is success? It's all created from our past perceptions and our illusions, right? So maybe you're not meant to go anywhere but right here. So we are bad parents to ourselves. Yeah, well, we become bad parents to ourselves because we learn from conditioning. So how do we return back to the childlike state? We have to unlearn everything that we've learned in order to arrive back at the un unconditioned mind. What is the unconditioned mind? The child mind. What is the ultimate state of uh, 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 nirvana, bliss, arriving at togetherness, the kundalini awakening, the fana, they call it in the Sufi language, arriving at this oneness of creation, which is how you're born, by the way. So you're not getting any new experience. You're just returning back to the source of, of experience. When you were born, you were born from this light and you were born into this world now you were learning how to engage in this world and then you took all that baggage and made it yours and now you became like Liz answered so well a parent to yourself you shouldn't be sitting around that's what my wife said some i should be cleaning the kitchen why who told you that no i should be doing that maybe you shouldn't maybe you're supposed to be sitting on the couch enjoying the breeze no 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 i gotta be doing that who said that Right, so again, that's what we do with the children. Uh, son, you can't just sit there. Uh, why not, Dad? Uh, you've got to be doing something with your life. Bring your times tables out. That's him. This is my father. He's, Bring your times tables out. But why? But I'm fine here. It's so cool just chilling out here, you know, riding my bicycle. No, you can't be riding a bicycle. So in other words, uh, on a train. Okay, that's nice. Everybody's on the move. 
welcome Ati from the train. So um, we are all trying to keep up to some expectation that we don't know how we got, but we bought into it. That, that is what our lives are. That's what we're meant to be doing. Um, but sometimes it doesn't work out for you. You see, for some people it does when they work their butts off and they're sitting in a beautiful mansion and they, you know, they're making, they got, you can go on holidays. And even those people, um, you find them to be quite un unhappy as well. But they're living in the delusion and it's working for them. The problem is these days, even if you had all the money and you had your private jet loaded up with all the fuel, you can't go. There's coronavirus. Sorry, buddy. You can't go anywhere. And then you get frustrated and you say, but I worked so hard for me to get on my private jet and go on my private island. And I got to sit here with a mask on and get a COVID test every five minutes. So what happened to my, um, to my joy? So at some point, the whole illusion collapses. So the process of unlearning, is it easier or more difficult than learning? Anyone wants to answer that? It's always more difficult to unlearn than to learn something new. It's interesting, isn't it? Because you'd be like, oh, well, I just go read a book on self-help. Oh, this is the 21 day steps to success. And you read that, you know, it's too difficult. Because what we're addicted to, define difficult. Well, that's another, another conversation. More challenging, okay? Um, and so, Abdullah, that conversation that we had was interesting about that book about you. We're addicted to the pattern. We're not addicted to the thing. Let me explain. When you want to have a drink, right? And if you use drinks or you use drugs or you use music or dance or walking in the park or having sex or whatever it is that you do as an outlet to release some steam, we're not addicted to the thing. We're addicted to the pattern. So in other words, we're not feeling so good about ourselves. We're not, things are getting stressful. What is stressful? How you're perceiving life. So then what we do is a pattern's being created. A valve is being filled up. Now we need a release valve because that's the pattern. We fill up, we fill up the pattern. Okay? We make the pattern based on our perceptions about life. Oh, I'm stressed today. Why are you stressed? Oh, because um, this person didn't come and uh, I'm late for work. You're late for work and the person didn't come. But now what you've done is you said, that will make me stressful. So I will fill up that valve. This is what we're doing. We're perceiving our, our environment as stressful. And the re valve gets filled. Now we need a pattern to release the valve. We created the pattern to fill the valve. And then we go out to release the valve in that pattern. So if we want to change, we don't stop drinking. We don't stop uh, smoking or whatever we do. Some people just wallow in their pity. That's, that's called learned helplessness. It's a wonderful addiction. It is an addiction. To feel like a victim is an addiction. To feel like a sufferer is an addiction. It's not a natural state of being. No child would wake up, oh, the weather is so terrible here in the UK. Have you ever heard a five-year-old saying that? But I've heard many 25-year-olds 20, say that, myself included, right? So uh, to be a victim is a learned helplessness and it is a pattern and an addiction. So how did we develop this pattern is because on the one hand, it's a decision to decide means cut. Ah, I like that. Nice, Caroline. Nice observation there. So you made a decision to fill up this valve and then you making a decision that you now need to, I need to get still. I need to do a meditation. I must go on a yoga retreat. I must take a you know a puff of the uh, of this thing, but it's not the thing that we are addicted to. It's the pattern. Now that you get that, what we have to do is change the patterns. And the first step to changing any pattern, which is what Lizanne said, awareness, your awareness of being present, of what's going on, my awareness. I am aware that I'm filling up this valve. Because when you're aware of filling up the valve and you stop it at the valve, you don't need the release. You don't need that. So you're sitting there going, that guy did that to me. I'm so stressed. I need to have a drink. Hold on a second. Did he do that to you or did you perceive him as you being done to? He did what he did. Why are you bringing that on? You didn't exercise. So now even nobody outside of yourself is making you feel terrible. You're saying, I feel terrible. I'm frustrated. My, my liver hurts. 
because I'm so frustrated because I didn't exercise. Who's punishing you? Nobody. So we take that, what somebody else says. What happened? Oh, he hurt me. What did he do? He said, I'm ugly. Well, maybe you are ugly. <laughs> None of you here on the call, of course, you're all very beautiful. So what if you're ugly? Maybe it's his perception. What is ugliness? So you just dissolve it at its core. Okay, so he upset me. But why did he upset me? Because he said nasty things about me. He said those things. Well, why do you have to perceive it as hurt? And that's the teaching. So that there's no pattern being created. And how do we even stop ourselves from getting onto that mountain? Awareness. So we're watching ourselves. We're, we're not watching others. We're watching how others make us feel. We're not looking at them. Oh, look at him again. He's being an asshole again. Look at her again. She's picking on me again. No, that's the wrong way to look at the world. You've got to look at what it's doing to you. So she's saying to you, you didn't pick up the food again and you left mirrors. Exactly. Carl Jung, right? Uh, our mutual love. So the world is a mirror. We project. So she may be saying, or he may be saying, well, you know, you're lazy. Right? And that's a statement. Now, what most people say is, she called me lazy again. The more important question to ask is, she said this word laziness. How did you react to that? How did I own that? How did I process that? How did I react to that? It, so she says, you're lazy. Or he says, you're lazy. Are you lazy? Number one. And if you are lazy, you go, yes, you're right. I'm lazy. Ego mind has no part to play. And then he, and he or she goes, Oh, they don't know what to do with it because you're not participating in the ego match. The second point is you say, actually, I'm not lazy because I went, took the kids to school, cleaned the kitchen, cooked some food, went for a walk, did my exercise. Those are not characteristics of what society would call lazy. So I'm not lazy. So you realize they're projecting onto you, and this is 90% of the time, the way they're feeling. So they're feeling lazy, and they're seeing it in you, and they're talking about themselves. So, so Rashawn, so there's, no there's no reason to wear. Yes, go ahead. Anissa. So you shared a while back Greg Braden's work with us, and he's very powerful. Yeah. He's got the seven ancient mirrors, but the three are the most prevalent in all of us. Yeah. It's who am I in the moment? So when somebody is giving me feedback, am I that in the moment, or am I not? Or the second one being... What am I judging? So if somebody's saying something or doing something, what am I actually judging in that moment? But it's not who I am, but I'm judging it. And then lastly, what am I magnetically drawn to? But it's parts that I give away of myself that I'm so drawn to specific individuals in my life because those are the parts that I give away of myself that I'd like back. So those are just three mirrors that speaks about what you just reflected on the projections and being mm. mindful of what those projections are. Who are you in the moment? What are you judging? And what are you drawn to magnetically? Mm. Uh, those are those are very powerful things. And I'll share. Will you share the link on the group, please, to the Greg Braden one? That is very useful, especially on a deeper level. And we're going to get to that. And that's part of the um, introduction to the twenty-one day challenge. And, and those are some of the things you're going to notice. Is that the universe and the world around you is a projection of yourself. You know, so we live in this thing. John Wheeler was a great quantum physicist. And he said, after all my research, what I've discovered that I can say conclusively is that we live in a participatory universe, which means that life is not happening to you, that you're creating your environment, you're creating your condition. So you are a co-creator. In other words, what you're putting out there Consciously and unconsciously, yes, Lizanne, Rumi, in a different context, but yes, is your perception. So when something happens to me or how I perceive it happening to me, I say, the first thing I say is, how did I create that? In the past, I'd say, why is this happening to me? I'd say, and now I say, how did I create that? Which is a big shift because that's owning up to it. I'm no longer a victim. I created that circumstance. Now, what's very important is to know what is the I that created that? Is the I, as in I'm thinking about it now, like uh, Anissa said, in the moment? The I is composed of our past perceptions, our memories, previous lives. Previous lives, not in the, in the, in the incarnation sense, but in the sense of our past, our parents, our grandparents, and those previous 
bodies have been transmitted. Those patterns, uh, conditioning has been transmitted to us. So when you all of a sudden overreact and you want to kill a man because he said you were stupid, right? And this applies more to men than it does to women. <laughs> and you overreact and you want to grab him by his jugular and squeeze him to death. And then you stop and you go, isn't that a bit of an overreaction? Like, what am I? And, and you know, this kind of unconscious rage, people actually kill each other over this. He said that. He, he said, my girlfriend's ugly. Well, have you seen your girlfriend? Right. It could be perceptions. Right. So we act in this unconscious way. Then when we say, how am I responsible? We're not talking about you as in now. We're talking about you as in the, the baggage that you carry. So then you've got to go back and do the work into how did these things arise in me? Why, was there anger and rage of this nature in my family? Was there a pattern that I'm exhibiting? And, and on the male patterns, you'll find the males in your life, your grandparents, grandfather, father, great-grandfather, and you exhibiting the same patterns as a male. And from the female side, a lot you'll find from the, from the female as well, exhibiting those same patterns. And it's normally the person you don't want to be like is the person that you're becoming. The person you don't want to be like is the person you're becoming. The irony, I don't want to be like my dad. No, I'm totally different. And then it happens all the time. People go, shit, I'm becoming my father. I didn't realize it. Oh, I'm becoming my mother. So that's when you know that I that we're talking about has got something to do with that. So, so the work to be done is to, first of all, bring awareness to it, make the unconscious patterns conscious. So you're saying, why did I react like that? And you're bringing awareness to that. So that's the 21-day challenge and everything Sorry. will be good. Sorry, Rashad. It's one thing bringing the awareness, but bringing it with compassion. That will come later, but we first have to notice it before we can bring compassion. Most of us are unconscious. You're absolutely right. We're going to come to that, Anissa, mm -hmm. on how to investigate the patterns, and that's part of the 21-day challenge. So it'll be good to um, revisit that as well. So today's is about gratitude. Okay, so, so the, the, the first session, we're going to be doing this on the group, and if you're in and participating in this, and those that didn't make it will listen to it later on, then daily you commit to the practice that means coming on the call listening to the um the audios uh, with the pdf that's attached and sharing your experiences this does two things one gives you a chance to give and then it gives other people the chance to receive at the same time by you participating you get to receive from these people and you're saying well he noticed that she noticed that i noticed this and it keeps you going and the feeling is incredible the group feeling Anything done in a group is, is a thousand times more effective than something done alone. So the first thing we're going to do is um, teach our bodies how to be in a state of gratitude because the body is programmed for a negativity bias, as Caroline said. 80% of the time, we're looking for what's not working, right? It's the, it's the black dot experiment. You look at your hand and I put a black dot in it. Did you notice my entire hand or did you notice the black dot? We noticed the black dot. That doesn't belong there. All of this that belong there, we didn't even notice. Look at this magnificent hand. Look at these patterns. They're unique. Look at everything that makes this hand. I mean, computers and robots are still trying to create a hand that does everything that we can. Um, and it's the, it's, it is the tool that humans use for affection, for pointing, for eating, for drinking, for showing affection, for expression. You could write a book about what the hands do, right? Now, how did I notice that? Well, because my I'm tuned in to that rather than going, oh, what is that little, oh, I think I got a prick in my hand. <laughs> That's my daughter's coming. I think I got something in my hand, right? That's the only time we even notice our hands are there, right? Or we're pointing or yelling at someone, right? So we have to become aware of unconscious things around us. So, so gratitude is something that has to be learned. It is something that elevates us, right? And what we say, what you appreciate appreciates what you ignore you'll continue to ignore and it will frustrate you so when you appreciate something and you say look at my hands now all your attention and your awareness are on these magnificent things and what they do and how they do it you could spend half a day just looking at your hands why not why because you're wasting time and you should be out there making money no or you should be cleaning the kitchen look at your hands right because you're missing out on life 
There's a wonderful book that says life is lived in the gap. In other words, between all of this and you go, oh, look at my hands. That's when life is lived in the gap. The gap between the thoughts, the gap between life, the gap between rushing around. We're just like, breathe. I'm here. It's now. That's freedom. Right? So we're going to teach ourselves how to be grateful or how to look for gratitude. What we're doing is we're building momentum. Momentum is like this ball, this massive ball of, un, of, of unlearning that we have to do. That's a big process. So to get this ball down, rolling down the hill, we need momentum. So how do we build momentum? By creating it. So we say, oh, I feel grateful, even if you don't, right? Oh, I feel so grateful for my hand and my health and my, my spouse and my child and my fridge. You're now looking in the environment for what you're grateful for. And so your mind and your attention is on what is working. That's momentum. So the next thought you're going to have is what else am I grateful for? Of course, in the beginning, you're going to go, well, enough of this gratitude shit. I've got to go mow the lawn. I've got to go take these kids to school. And you're back to living um, your suffering, right? A, a pattern that we're more addicted to, more than cocaine or uh, um or any other type of drug, we're addicted to suffering and to being a victim, right? To suffering life. Life is all suffering. Even the Buddha said that. Life is all suffering in here. So then, gratitude is something we have to become aware of. So we need, we need tools. And this is what the 21-day challenge is. Your toolbox for finding the life you've always been looking for inside of yourself. Only to remind you that it's always been there all along. But because of your perceptions and your creations, you no longer can find it. So we've got to teach our bodies, not our minds, our bodies. When we say our bodies, we're talking about the neurons. When we talk about the neurons, we don't even know what they are. Because still today, when they opened up our skulls, they still didn't find our thoughts. Right? So the thoughts are not housed in the brain, are they? Because you can't find them in the brain. So where are our thoughts coming from? Right. So where are our feelings of life and our thoughts coming from? It's almost like we're projecting something out there and something is returning to us. Where That's why when I say, how did I create it? There's something in me that's projecting out there and it's something that me that's confirming it. I'm having a terrible day, you wake up and you say. And then you look out there and you see things that are not working in your favor. And then what do you feel? I think I'm having a terrible day. I hope nothing goes wrong. What happens? Something else goes wrong. So you can see that you're participating in the universe. There's a giving and there's a taking. Now, can we change the process? Can we go and force ourselves to put a frequency, it's all frequency, out there and see if the universe responds with that frequency? So you say, I feel so grateful today for this, for that. What is your next thought? And because I've done this challenge, and all of you have done this challenge, or quite a few of you, you notice that you're thinking better thoughts. And I practiced this for a couple of years. I was in tears. I had tears coming out of my eyes because it was in gratitude for my life. And I said, what is this? Rashad, if you're going mad, you're crying because you're grateful. And I was not doing it anymore. I wasn't doing this. Okay, let's see. Um, I just went, God, you've given me everything. My life is magnificent. Look at what I do. Look at what I do. And I was like, where's this coming from? It's because my body learned that. Right? So my wife says to me, when you're sitting there, it's like you're not even there. You're just like, we can have you anywhere. In the past, it'd be like, what are you saying? What are you doing? It'd be like, let's get rid of dad so we can relax a bit because he's such a grumpy bastard. Right? He always wants us to be this way and that way. Now I'm sitting there and they can walk right past me and they laugh about this. They trick me like this and I'm not even there. Why is that? Is it because uh, I'm some kind of Zen master? No. It's because I taught my body to accept the moment as it is. And eventually my body just goes. So my wife said, how did you do it? I said, I don't know. At the end of the 21 day challenge, you'd be like, I don't know. I don't think it was the 21 day challenge. I was always like this. So people, after they coach with me, I said, so what do you think it was? I don't think it was anything you said, really. <laughs> it, was, it was all me. You know? <laughs> like, okay, good. So that worked for you. That's great. And that's what we want to do, is to teach our bodies. So I need a break from talking now. So someone else needs to say something. Anyone? You're all dumbfounded. Maria. Maria, say something. Maria has written... The most magnificent things. Yeah, but I'm good on paper. 
what can I say? But for me, gratefulness was a big turnaround, really. And it came in one moment and it stayed. That's all. It stayed forever. If not forever, it, it has stayed though. I feel mm. it every day. Wow. You're lucky. Did you practice it? I don't know, coach. You are you you tell me. Did I practice it? You are so strict. I must have. I don't know. <laughs> You've been practicing it every week. I've just been doing it unconsciously, right? Because but but you said it beautifully in the latest thing you wrote. The well, words that you use. I love the title of it. I'll send it to you if Maria allows us because she's very uh, Yeah. Okay, send it. Yeah, I, I talk about everybody, so <laughs> Oh, do you? Okay, well, I, I just started reading a bit of it. I mean, I love your writing, and she didn't think of herself as a writer. Well, she didn't think of herself as a musician either. Actually, I don't think you know. You don't know what you thought of yourself, but yeah, your writings has been amazing. Um, and so, what Maria, what, what Maria was uh, saying in the document is that how harsh I am in the words, right? And all of you experienced this, right? I'm like, no, I'm not allowing you to say that. Actually, John, I remember when you said, what did you say? You said something. And I said, no, you're not allowed to say that. What was it? Do you want to share that, John? Do you remember? I can't remember. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Very convenient, John. Very convenient. <laughs> so, so he said something, and I said, uh, no, John, that's not true. Right? You're not like this. Oh, was it about getting off your ass? No, it was something else. It was another thing that you said. And I said, no, but that's not true. You don't need to get off your ass. Right? Um, and, and so... I'm very, very careful about the words that we say to ourselves, even when we're talking about ourselves. So I'm not concerned if you say, oh, yeah, he's so nasty. That's not important. What I'm concerned about is when you say, uh, I really should become a nicer person. I have a problem with that, you see, because you're implying that you're a bad person. Now, when you're talking to yourself, you're talking to the inner child who's listening at the same time. And that is not the ammunition you need for the changes that we're meant to make here. Yes, it's been amazing, uh, Arti. Thank you for that, uh, Maria's reflections. Um, it's the language that we say to ourselves. So when you speak about yourself, I'd like you to never forget that you're talking to an inner child inside of you. The state of being we're trying to return back to. We're trying to integrate that little child in the, into our lives. The only way back to our little child is by working with it, not against it. So if I say I'm really nasty and I should be doing nicer things, or I'm really lazy and I should be doing more, or I'm not successful and I really should be doing, the little child inside of you went, shit, okay, yeah, we are that way. That's not momentum. You can't change momentum working with your little child by being brutal to it. So I would say to the little child, you know what, I think we can do a little bit more, but we've done so much already, you know. I need to clean the kitchen. You know what? Maybe right now you are rebellious. Oh, Maria's rebellious. Oh, no, 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 Caroline. Uh uh. No, no. She's not. She's not. Uh, you're a very good student, too, Caroline, by the way. Um, but you're all rebellious. That's why you attract me because I'm so rebellious. My God, am I hard work. See, Abdullah, thank you for putting your hand up. Abdullah has to go eat. No, some. actually, I just wanted to share something before oh, I had to go. Oh, I thought you had to go. Share, no, share, well, I should have gone half an hour ago, but yeah. Okay, well, now see, you should have. <laughs> bad boy, bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was just yesterday, yesterday, Friday. Mm. Um, so I was on day three and I'm concentration and focus. And you say in the, in the, in the document, um, what is it like when you're in the shower, just like focus on every part of your body, right? Now, as Muslims it's our practice that we have there's a kind of specific shower that we do before we go to mosque on a friday it's an evolution it's in many cultures you do that yeah the cleaning yeah. of the yeah and, the spiritual body as well and in in the practice is you have you actually have to wipe every part of your body from yeah. like top to toe right and so i'm doing the doing the practice and i can honestly say that this thing that for my entire life has been something robotic that you just go through the actions of it to do it. Like that shower was a spiritual shower. It was oh. insane. And it was like every single part of the body that you kind of have to touch anyway. And it's like, then you're seeing the fingers and you're like, okay, the fingers do this and the arms and my arms are doing this. And then, you know, I'm cleaning my nose and I'm like, wow, my nose is scent and smell and my ears are hearing and my eyes are sight. And then just, the water on the body is feeling and touch and everything. it was just it was insane it was like this kind of wow. spiritual mystical thing doing something that i've done every friday since 
I was 17 or 18. Wow. So that was that was awesome. It was like the first time I'd ever actually had to shower. It was quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, uh, Abdullah. I remember Zahira saying to me, because part of the practice, I think it's in the challenge, where I say, take the soap and begin rubbing it. And you're just mm. with the soap and you're lathering. I remember just taking some of the wash and I put it in my hand. I was like, I've never smelled. This is amazing. And I'm feeling it and I'm there with it. I put it over your face and you're just like, what is this? Like you're on a <laughs> high or something. Like, what am I taking? Right? It's called yeah. life. Right? Um, yeah, Abdullah is a writer. So Abdullah is very, uh, and, and by the way, Abdullah is a writer and he loves your stuff, Maria. So uh, that says something about. You're writing, so you're a writer. Whether you like it or not, Maria, you're a writer. And I'm waiting for book number, what are you on? Book number 17 or something like that. But she says, I'm not a writer. Yeah, you are. So, yes, when you're so engaged in that moment, I mean, I used to do this on the calls. Lizanne, you know, bring an apple, right? Or some water, and we're there chewing that apple. And you're going to see the chocolate experiment in the book. It's all there, and you're going to be mesmerized at the life that you are right now. And it's absolute ecstasy to watch you people on the other side, because I put that together after so much, looking up everything, reading thousands of pages, hundreds of thousands of pages, and watching hours and said, what is this? And then I saw this Zen practice where you're in the present moment, exactly, Caroline, and you're really there, and you're really engaging. I started doing that with my family. I used to have this thing, because I used to travel for 200 days of the year, and I always just think, I'm never with my children. And I always have this guilt complex. And I said, well, you're out there earning a living for your family. So first of all, get rid of this guilt. It doesn't belong to this sweet little child inside of you. So don't use that. Okay, Maria, uh, lovely to see you. We're not going to be much longer, but if you need to um, go, you can. So, so then I came home and I said, if I can be present with my children for that time, will it make a difference? And now they're like, Dad, when are you going on your next trip? I'm like, aren't you sick of me? No, because I'm entirely there with them. I look at them. I'm with them. Normally, I'm there like, okay, you know, our phones, my God, that's a distraction, right? Yeah, what are you saying? Oh, yeah, nice trick. Yeah, really good. Well done. And you're back on your phone, right? And so when I see my child coming, Dad, I want to show you something. I do that immediately. I'm like, yes, show me. Oh, is that all you can do? Wow. And then they look at me and they're like bored of me. They're like, okay, because I got it. All they want is your full attention. The same with the child inside of you. It wants your full attention. So when it gives you pain, when it makes you feel sad, and you're like, I feel terrible, don't run away. Turn to the terrible feeling and stay with it. Your emotions are like children, and you're all going to learn this, and we're going to go through it. So to finish off now, because we hit our hour mark, it's amazing how quickly the hour arrived. Um, and then we'll, all the meditations are there, so we don't need to do the meditations. Be on the 21-day challenge. Share your experience. Every fortnight, we will meet and we'll go through it. But every day, share your experiences. You're going to help another person. But because the ego mind likes to know what's in it for me, it's going to help you tremendously to keep momentum up. And on the other side, there's a gift waiting for you. There's going to be a walking meditation that will be transformative. But you can't do that now. Because you're not ready for it. Right now, you're living your lacks. You're living your fears. What we want to do is to create that feeling of love, the acceptance, engagement in life. Then you will do this practice and you will manifest into reality your new existence. And you won't... When are we starting? We're starting now. At least four times. Okay, Anissa. We're starting now. There is only the now. Isn't that right? There isn't a tomorrow. That's, you can ask a child. Oh, we'll do that tomorrow. Tomorrow? When's that, Daddy? It's only now. So you got to be thinking and feeling like the child. So when you fall off the horse and you say, oh, shit, I missed today, you don't do that. You say, I missed today. I'm back onto it now. The, never let the gap pass. Well, take care, Alti, between I, I'm not doing it to I'm back onto it. If you can shorten that, because what you're self-sabotaging mind wants you to do is say, oh my God, I'm too embarrassed. I can't post in the group now. I missed out day one. What should I do? Then it becomes day 10 and you get off the group and you're like, no, I can't do this. Be careful. So when you jump off that horse and you fall off that horse and your life got too busy and you know you decided to do something else, say, okay, I've decided I'm back on it. Okay. If it's three days, five days, seven days, or 200 years, you're going to still say, whenever you can, bring your awareness back, say, okay, I'm off now, back on it.
we don't you don't want to tell yourself oh god no that's the self tab it loves that talk okay they'll take him uh it loves that that discourse Ugh, you know you're never going to do it why don't you do it you don't enter that discussion at all so when you fall off the horse jump back on that's it and i wish you all the best i will be doing the challenge along with you and i will be posting i commit and you can decide whether you want to commit or not to posting your feedback and the most important word you'll ever give to anyone is the word you make with yourself what you say to yourself you never break that word welcome see you guys do not break the bond you make with yourself if you commit to something you honor it to yourself so be careful what you commit to if you can't commit don't but don't break your word to yourself people that have got trust issues do not trust themselves if you can trust yourself and keep the word to yourself you will trust the world if you can't trust yourself and you don't honor your word you can never trust anybody do not break the word you make with yourself that's a very important so i commit to doing the challenge with you and if i fall off the horse i will jump back on immediately without a second thought and i'll see all of you and i hope that you all make the same commitment i will see all of you on the 21 day challenge and we will be enough for each other any questions any comments any feedback before we go who's looking forward to it <laughs> i put myself in a trap cuz caroline where's your hand caroline <laughs> thank you caroline Jamila, thank you, Jamila. Uh, me, okay, uh, Zahira. John, did I see your hand, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but, but I don't understand what the 21 day challenge is. I mean, I obviously I've got the step one, but where do I, so I start now, tomorrow? I mean, now, do you put a link? don't even now. I'm gonna, you, you got the link, it's in your, in your is WhatsApp. It? All right, cool. Click the link and then you'll enter the group. And when all of you are in the group, most of you are, then you yeah. will get a PDF along with voice recordings to undertake for each day of the of the week right. all thank you. step by step and then you will share your feedback and thank you for asking that question any other questions otherwise may the best man win okay now. so are we are we using on the are we using the link of the 21 day to report out That's yeah in the group on WhatsApp. The 21 day group if you're not the 21 day group. group okay get in the 21 day challenge group the yep. link has been shared there if you don't have the link you all have my number message me and I'll give you the link uh, and in that group is where we will share our feedback and we will all cross the finish line together and then we will celebrate by, uh, so, coach, that's what I wanted to say at the beginning of the call, you said, it's not a competition. You're not winning anything, but actually you are gaining a hell of a lot more than winning something. Absolutely. Thank you, coach. Appreciate that. <laughs> uh, all right. Well. Have an amazing uh, challenge. I will see all of you on the group and I look forward to your participation and anticipating the new energy that will be created from this. Each one of you are participating to the energy of the group. So uh, I look forward to each, each one of you equally contributing to the energy. I know Lizanne will be the fireball, but we're all gonna be as excited as Lizanne. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you. see you all in a fortnight on a call. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>